Hey, imagine being a freight broker and going from $1 million plus in sales to almost zero overnight and being on the verge of bankruptcy. Imagine that. Well, today that's the story I'm going to share with you. And I'm also going to share some very, very important lessons that I want you to understand. So thank you so much for joining me on my Freight Burger Bootcamp Live. I do these live trainings every single week. And today I'm going to tell you a very, very important story and some lessons you need to garner from that story. But before we do that, thank you so much for joining me. Hit me up in the comments with the city and state you're logging in from. Let me know, are you on LinkedIn? Are you on YouTube? Are you on Facebook? Where are you watching this? And tell me the city and state you're logging in from. I'd love to hear from you. If you're catching this on replay, hit me up with hashtag replay. Thank you so much. Okay, so <clears throat> that's what's happening. Here's the agenda. Number one, we're gonna do the live training. All right, I'm gonna tell you that story. I'm gonna give you some very important lessons. Hang tight. You absolutely, whether you're a startup and are pre-revenue and don't have customers yet, or whether you're a broker who, are, who already has customers, this applies to all of you, okay? I can't express this enough. Stick around for this story. You're not gonna wanna miss this. So we're gonna start the training. Then we're gonna do a giveaway, a Freypreneur t-shirt. Then we're gonna go into live Q&A, all right? So that's the agenda. If you stick around to the end, we can do live Q&A. Hold your questions till the end until I let you know that we're ready to go for Q&A. So, all right, let's give a few shout outs and then we'll get the ball rolling. Uh, welcome, Joe Almighty from For Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Kate Moody from Orange County, California. Uh, Kevin Perry from Raleigh, North Carolina. Nate Davis from Texas. Maria Santos from Texas, from Memphis, Texas. Michael McLaughlin from Zephyr Hills, Florida. Uh, Mladen from Alaska. Wow, cool. Vernetta from Vineland, New Jersey. Derek from Greenville, South Carolina. Blakely. Friend from Phoenix, Arizona. Cynthia Moore from District Heights, Maryland. Zoran from Macedonia. Man, that guy's always here. I love it. Hitesh from uh, Cincinnati. Kristen from Mountain View, California. Sandra Skurlark from Hampton, Georgia. Veronica Larco from Houston, Texas. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here. Thank you. I, I truly appreciate it. Frank from Mi Miami, Florida. Uh, Michelle Boldridge. Boldridge, I'm sorry from Topeka, Kansas. Yanisa from Dalton, Georgia. Man, uh, Jorge from Canton, Georgia. Y. Ruiz from Miami, Florida. Thank you so much for being here. I truly appreciate it. If I didn't get a chance to shout out for you, come back next week. I promise I'll give it a shot. Hey, listen, today we have a very important training. I'm going to tell you a story about a freight broker that went from seven figures, way up on high, making lots of money, to zero and almost throwing himself into bankruptcy. And I'm gonna, this is a personal friend of mine, okay? And, uh, and I'm gonna share that story with you and I'm gonna share some very important lessons that I want you to take from that story, okay? So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna let a few more people get live and then we're gonna get the ball rolling. So hold tight. Let me put my uh, computer here on do not disturb. Cool. I'm not going to get any notifications. We're not going to be interrupted. I suggest you do the same. Shut your phone off, close your door, grab a pen and paper. You're going to take some notes. Okay. This is what you're going to want to do today. All right. I got a little water here. I'm going to grab a quick drink. All right. I got a lot of notes here. Okay. Uh, I wanted to make sure that there's some really important, here's the takeaways. Here's the big lessons at the end. So stick around to the end because I'm going to tell the story first and then we're going to get into the very important lessons, okay? So let me get this organized. All right. So, man, I can't believe it's almost, I mean, it just kind of occurred to me before I hit the live. It's almost May and it just snowed here the other day. <laughs> I'm in Buffalo, New York. Now the snow didn't stick. I'm not trying to uh, you know, bash Buffalo, but ultimately it just snowed here the other day. I looked out the window and there was flurries coming down. Um, and I do remember at least one time in my life when it snowed in May. Um, so it's kind of crazy, but yeah, May is right around the corner. So I'm excited. Uh, I, I do a lot of work on my property. I own some property down South. I'm, I'm, uh, not down South, South of here about an hour. I'm going to have an outdoor guy. I like to hunt and fish. 
uh, and I do a lot of habitat work on my property. And so, yeah, it's, uh, it's the time of year where I'm going to start getting really busy, but I hope you guys are enjoying the spring. Uh, I hope you guys are ready for a great summer. I hope you guys are here to learn something today. So without further ado, I think we got a bunch of people live. Um, and I know a lot of people will catch this on replay. So here we go. Today, I'm going to share with you the story of how a freight broker went from doing over seven figures per year, over a million dollars a year in sales to zero overnight and almost throwing himself into bankruptcy. But most importantly, I'm going to share with you, what is it? Three or four, three very, very important lessons that you can learn from this to avoid this happening to you. All right. Whether you're a startup or whether you're an experienced broker. This applies to either. You need to understand this. Okay, so here's how the story goes. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave his name out of the equation for this story, just for anonymity purposes, because it really doesn't matter. But when I was running my brokerage, LDI, when I was the CEO and owner of running that brokerage, I had a freight broker agent. It was an agent. So he does the same job as a freight broker, but he was an agent working under us. We had about 80 offices throughout the United States and he was one of them. And he had been working with a very large shipper for several years and he was doing really, really well. Uh, he was doing, he, he only had one shipper. He was doing over a million dollars a year with really healthy margins of 20% plus margins had a great relationship with them, did a lot of business with them and made a lot of money. He was making as an agent at that time, he was making between 15 and maybe 25 or $30,000 a month in commissions, working from home with very little overhead. Okay. So he had a highly profitable freight broker agency working under my business. And so I remember when he first came on and I saw he had this one big shipper and I kept, I had a conversation with him about the need to diversify his customer base. Uh, and I said to him, I said, listen, what would happen to you? What would happen to your family? What would happen to your lifestyle if you lost that one big shipper? And he agreed and said he'd promised to try to do some prospecting and pick up a new shipper. But he was so busy covering loads and servicing his customer that he didn't have time. And so he was very frustrated because he didn't have that time. But this went on for a long time, well over a year. We had numerous conversations about the need to prospect, get new customers and de-risk his business. Because the fact is having one big customer is a huge risk. You'd much rather have 10 customers doing $100,000 each for a million in sales than to have one customer doing a million dollars, correct? All right, so I explained that to him. And unfortunately, he while he listened, he didn't take action. He wasn't able to take action. And the next thing you knew, he called me up out of the blue and I could tell something was wrong. He was in a panic. And he let me know and told me that he had lost the shipper and he was not gonna be getting any other freight and he didn't think he was gonna be able to get the shipper back. So he literally went from making 15 to 20, $30,000 a month in commissions as a freight agent doing over seven figures a year in sales, okay, to zero. Now you have to understand something. He had built his entire lifestyle around that income. So his home and his spending habits and everything, and, and he should have been able to save a bunch of money along the way. But unfortunately, like a lot of people, when you make more, you spend more. And so ultimately, um, his savings ran out very quickly. And the next thing I knew, he was asking me for a loan. He was asking me for money to try to float him um, until he could get that shipper back or recover the cash flow that he had lost. And so in trying to be a good partner, because I was the broker and he was the agent and a friend, we started loaning him some money to try to float him along. It wasn't a lot of money, but it, but it helped him during that difficult time. And fortunately, within a few months, he was able to land another big shipper and start generating some positive cash flow. And it was a real, another really good customer. And 
you know, I remember having that conversation with him and telling him, listen, you need to de-risk your business. You need to get another shipper. Don't fall back into that trap that you fell into the first time of having one big shipper. And fortunately, he eventually went on to get other shippers and eventually went on to get that first big customer back that he had lost. Okay. So this is kind of the rise, the fall and the rise again of a, of a freight broker agent that I know personally. And the last I heard from him several years ago, he had just had his first month where he had made over a hundred thousand dollars in commission in one month. Okay. So in one month he had taken what he had leveraged with having one customer and parlayed that into a bunch of customers. And he had generated over a hundred thousand dollars in commissions, not in gross profit, but in commissions as an agent that he had been paid in one month. And so he called me to thank me. I had already sold the company by then, but he had called me to thank me. And, um, and I really appreciated that. And, you know, I appreciate him for, you know, for all he did for our business, for his business, and for the fact that he actually learned from some of his mistakes. And so I wanted to share with you guys um, some of the lessons that you can take away from this. And these are very important lessons. And usually these are very expensive lessons, okay? Meaning you have to experience these things in order to learn these lessons, but you can learn in advance. So I'm going to share with you three things, okay? Number one lesson I want you to look, take from this is never ever rely on one or two big customers for your lifestyle, for your business. You have to diversify your customer base. As I said to you before, if you're going to be doing a million dollars in sales, it's better to have 10 clients averaging $100,000 a piece to do a million in sales than it is to have one or two big clients doing a million dollars in sales. Because if you lose that one client, the ship can sink. But if you got 10 clients, it's kind of a bump in the road. It hurts a little bit, but you can de-risk your business by diversifying the number of customers you have. And you would be absolutely shocked how many freight brokers and how many freight broker agents where 50 to 90% of their revenue is controlled by two or three shippers. And it's a huge risk. So you have to continue prospecting, okay? All right, number two, when you don't have time to prospect, and to sell and to go out and get new clients because you're so busy covering loads for your existing clients, it's time to hire. Yes, it's time to hire somebody to do some of the operational responsibilities like posting loads, negotiating with carriers, dispatching carriers, following up on bills of lading, all the things that an operations person is gonna do, right? So that you can buy your time back to continue prospecting, to continue selling. This is a really important lesson. You can never ever stop selling as a business owner because here's the facts. I don't care what business you're in. There's always going to be some customer turnover. You're gonna have new customers coming in and other customers going out. Hopefully you have more customers coming in than you're losing and you have more revenue coming in than you're losing and that will show growth. But the only way that happens when you get really busy and you don't have time to prospect, and I can't tell you how many times I've heard this from people, heard this from agents and from brokers. I just don't have time. I just don't have time. I'm so busy. You need to find time. And the only way you can find time is to hire somebody, train somebody to take over that responsibility so you can buy back your time. So this is where you have to take some of those profits and reinvest it into your business. Okay. That's lesson number two. Number three, never ever give up. You are going to run into difficulties. You are going to run into challenges. Sometimes you're going to think that the sky is falling and there is no way to recover. But the fact is you have to pick yourself up, dust yourself off, dig your heels in and move forward. And that's what this gentleman did. So, you know, I, I've got a lot, I've got really good things to say about him because ultimately at the end of the day, a lot of people would have folded up their, their chair and, you know, and, and just folded up their table and folded up shop and just quit. 
But he didn't quit. He dug his heels in and he fought for what he knew he could do and what he deserved. And ultimately, he went on to build a very successful freight broker agency. I told you the last time I heard from him several years ago, he was doing, he did over set, he did over six figures, over a hundred thousand dollars in commissions in one month. Okay. So those are the three lessons I wanted to share with you. Um, listen, if you're curious about becoming a freight broker or a freight agent, and you're just getting started and you need some help and you need to connect the dots, check out freightbrokerbootcamp.com. We've trained over 10,000 students been in business training people over a decade. I've personally done over $200 million as a freight brokerage. And we offer a 60 day, 100% unconditional money back guarantee. So check that out. Make sure you like, comment and share the video. And we'll see you next week on another Freight Broker Bootcamp Live. Okay, so for those of you that are live, hold tight. Hold tight. We are gonna do a giveaway, the Freightpreneur T-shirt. Hold on, I'll tell you how to do that, how to qualify for that. And then we are going to do Q&A, hold your questions until after we do the giveaway, okay? And then I'll let you know when you can type your questions because we will do some Q&A. I'll get to as many questions as I can. I probably won't get to them all. But yeah, I thought that was really interesting and, and important and there are some important lessons. Now, there's probably a bunch of other lessons you can garner from that. Um, matter of fact, if there's something else that you took away from that story, share it with me in the comments. I'd love to hear your takeaway, right? The above and beyond the three that I gave you, right? Which is diver diversify your customer base, never, re never rely on one or two customers. Um, when you find yourself not having enough time to prospect, it's time to hire and train somebody to buy back some of your time. And number three, even in the darkest days, don't give up. Because if you dig your heels in and you take what you've learned and you parlay that, you can rebuild, okay? So those are a few of my lessons. What are some of the takeaways you got from that story? Now, that's a real life story, okay? That's a 100% true story, as I recall it, you know, several years ago. But yeah, and that gentleman is still a very successful freight broker agent today. Uh, again, I'm going to leave his name out of just for anonymity because I, I didn't call him to ask to tell this story. I'm sure he wouldn't have minded, but I didn't call him. Um, so yeah, so that's the deal. And um, let's see, what do we got here? Anybody else have any takeaways from the story? Any other lessons that you think are important that you took away or that others might be able to, you know, garner from this? All right. And here we're going to do the, the, freight broker, the Freightpreneur t-shirt giveaway, the very coveted Freightpreneur, someone who solves problems you don't know you have in ways you can't understand. All right. So here's all you got to do. If you guys want to qualify for a chance to win the shirt. Now, I'm not shipping it overseas. You have to be in the United States. Okay. So in order to participate in this, you got to be in the United States. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to take out your smartphone. I don't care if it's an Apple or an Android, whatever you got. And I want you to pull up your favorite podcast app on Apple, pull up Apple podcast. Uh, if you're on Android, pull up Spotify or Google podcast or, you know, any, anywhere where you listen to music or podcasts. And what I want you to do is I want you to type in freight broker bootcamp. And what's going to happen is you're going to see the logo come up with my bald, shiny head, and it says Freight Broker Bootcamp. You can probably see that there. All right. I want you to um, rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. Okay. Rate, review, and subscribe. I mean, it'll say subscribe or follow, right? Same thing. Um, rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. And then come back in to the comments and let me know. You have to now listen carefully. You have to tell me you rate, reviewed, subscribed on Apple or you rate, reviewed, subscribed on Spotify. Wherever you did it, you have to rate, review and subscribe and then come back in here and type and let me know where you did that. Don't say done. Don't say subscribed. Don't say, um, you know, Apple. Don't say Spotify. Let me know that you rate, reviewed and subscribe. It's the only way you can win. OK, because I'm going to pick one winner in probably the next minute to get the shirt, the Freightpreneur shirt. Then I'm going to ship it off to him. I've given hundreds of these away and, um, and I appreciate you guys playing along. Just know that podcast is absolutely free. We've got 170 episodes, free trainings on that podcast. It's the best of the best of the best trainings I've ever done in audio format. You can check it out and listen to it while you're driving. You can listen to it while you're on your treadmill working out. You can listen to it when you're walking the dogs, whatever. Those are my three favorite times to listen. Um, and we've been ranked, fortunately, in the top 100 out of all entrepreneur podcasts on Apple. 
Okay. And a lot of that has to do with you and, and our faithful community and listeners. So thank you so much. So rate, review, and subscribe. Hit me up in the comments and let me know you did that. And I will, that will qualify you for a chance to win the Freightpreneur t-shirt. So you guys got about one minute. Um, okay, Blake. Yeah. Another, another time wasters when you have customers that want to quote their loads all day and only a few loads a week. Yeah. Okay. Yep. No, I agree with you. All right. So who wants a chance to win the Freightpreneur t-shirt? All you got to do is go on the, wherever you listen to podcasts. Most people either listen to it on Apple or Spotify, but you've got Google Podcasts, all these other podcast apps. Go in, search Freight Breaker Bootcamp, rate, review, and subscribe. Come back into the comments. Let me know that you did that. And that will qualify you as for a chance to win the Freightpreneur t-shirt. And then I'm going to pick one winner. So you guys got about one minute. And then we are going to do the Q&A. Hold your questions till the end, okay? Hold your questions till the end. Very important, okay? I'm not ready for questions yet because if you start typing those questions in, um, if you start typing those questions in, then I'm they're going to get lost in the feed, okay? All right, Blakely Friend did it. Rate, reviewed, and subscribed on Apple. Awesome. Congrats. Thank you. Right now, you're guaranteed to win because you're the only guy who has actually done what I said. So... You know, you might be the winner of the Freightpreneur t-shirt because you're the only one. Now, normally we have 10 or 20 different people, but I think everybody's sleeping today. I'm not sure. Everybody's sleeping at the switch or maybe everybody on here has already got a shirt because I've given away so many. How many of you guys have ever actually won the shirt? Is there anybody here that's actually won the Freightpreneur t-shirt? Um, because right now it looks like um, either nobody wants the shirt anymore and I can start putting it away and stop giving it away or everybody's got one. What's going on? Talk to me, people. Talk to me, Goose. Oh, Joe Mo Mighty wants one. Oh, Kate Moody won one. Yes, you did, Kate Moody. Um, Joe Mo Mighty's won one too, but he's going back for another bite. Yes. And Kate, I believe you did send me the details and I believe we did process that order. So I don't think it, it won't be an issue. Cat, not Kate. Cat, I'm sorry. I always say Kate. Damn it. My bad. I always read that as Kate, not... It, listen, you can yell at me every time I say your name wrong. It's okay. All right. Who else? All right. So right now we've got two people. <laughs> this will be really easy. You guys literally have 60 seconds to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. Okay. We got three now. If you do, you're going to get a chance to win. Right now you got a 30% chance to win, a 33% chance to win because we've only got a few people that have done it. Um, all right. There's another one. So now we're down to 25%, which is still really good odds. And I'm going to take a quick drink. And then we are going to do the giveaway and then we're going to jump into the live Q and A. Hold tight. Don't disappear. If you have questions, make sure you stick around. I'll do my best to try to get to everybody's question. The cool part about the Q and A is even if you don't have questions at the top, on the top of your mind, you can learn from the questions of other people that are going through the same thing that you're going through. So you may not have a question that's, you know, jumping out at you. But, you know, maybe Kate has a question or maybe or maybe Kat has a question or maybe Noah has a question or Calvin has a question or Blakely has a question that you can learn from in advance. So that's one of the biggest powers of the Q&A. Um, all right. OK, guys, so that's it. We've got a few people um, that have rate, reviewed and subscribed. I'm going to close my eyes and randomly pick one person. Let's make sure we get into the section where they rate, reviewed, and subscribed. Okay, here we go. All right, here we go. Ready? Randomly picking one person, and I missed. Hold on. I didn't hit anybody. All right, so what do we got? All right, we got Noah Edmund. Noah Edmund, rate, reviewed, and subscribed on Apple. Noah, congratulations. You're the winner of the Freightpreneur t-shirt. Someone who solves problems you don't know you have in ways you can't understand. Now, listen, here's all you got to do. Go to my Freight Broker Bootcamp Facebook page or my personal LinkedIn profile, Ask Dennis Brown, and message me your full name, your mailing address, your size, and that you won the Freightpreneur t-shirt 
get, uh, the podcast subscribe Freightpreneur t-shirt giveaway, okay? The podcast subscribe t-shirt giveaway. So I need your full name, your, your mailing address inside the United States, your size, unisex sizing. This is, I think, a, maybe a large, it's small, medium, large, extra large. And then make sure you let me know you won the free t-shirt giveaway for subscribing to the podcast, okay? And we'll ship that out. You usually get that within a couple of weeks. Thank you, everybody, for playing along. Uh, Noah Edmund, yes way, you won. You won, Noah. Congrats. All right, cool. So now if you have questions for me, questions about this training, questions about freight broker startup, freight broker sales, whatever it is, hit me up in the comments with some questions. I'll do my absolute best with the time that is allotted uh, we've got a little bit of time for some Q&A. Hit me up with some questions. I'll do my absolute best to try to answer them. Do me a favor. Make your questions specific. Don't ask me the question of how do I get shippers? Okay? That question is, you know, you need to be more specific. The, uh, if you ask me how to get shippers, I'm going to tell you it's called sales. If you are more specific about that question, right, like, should I be doing cold calling to get shippers? Or is it better to do face-to-face -face when you're prospecting for shippers? Or how can I use LinkedIn to get shippers? Those are specific questions, right? But don't give me, try not to give me generic questions. Try to give me something specific and relevant and meaningful, okay? Something that you and everybody here can learn from, okay? So without further ado, hit me with some questions, guys. Uh, let's see what we got. Cat Moody has a question. Why did he lose his biggest shipper in the first place? You know, it's really interesting. Uh, I, I, was, I, I don't believe, I forgot he didn't mention that. It had nothing to do with him or a service failure or issues. What it had to do with was the fact that the transportation manager at the shipper that, that he had a very strong personal relationship with was no longer controlling the freight. They brought in a new person who had his own agenda who had his own providers and he cut, he cut this person out of the loop, brought his people in and there, that's how it happened. And that can happen. Sometimes it's not a service issue. Sometimes it's not a pricing issue. Sometimes it's not an issue that you created or caused. It's something behind the scenes that you have zero control over. So yeah, good question. Thank you for pointing that out, Kat. Blakely friend asks, what are your thoughts on working with freight forwarders? Have you worked with them before? And what are some tips on how to get locked in specific lanes with them? Or are they a waste of time? You know, if you work with freight brokers, it's basically co-brokering. Okay. I'm never, I was never a big fan of co-brokering freight, although it can work. I always wanted to have direct control of the shipper. Now, where I see people using co-brokering very effectively is, is kind of two scenarios. One is if you're doing drayage freight, import, export, drayage freight, meaning you're shipping, you're moving containers in and out of the port because most of that freight is controlled by international freight forwarders and they will outsource that, that trucking component, the pickup and delivery side to either carriers and sometimes they will co-broker it. They will work with other brokers. So that's one area that I find can be very effective for working with freight forwarders because it's very hard to work directly with a shipper on an international movement because the international freight forwarder basically controls the point to point in most cases. They give an all in delivered rate from China to the US or US to wherever, right? So yeah, so freight working with freight forwarders in the drayage business can be a good business model. As far as locking in rates, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, if you're working with a freight forwarder out of specific, out of a specific port, then it'll probably be a lot easier because you are focused in on that port and that's where they've brought you in. You could probably expand into other ports, but yeah, I'm not quite sure about getting locked in no different than any other, um, shipper, right? You have to provide the value and they have to see the value in order to do that. Um, as far as other, other ways that people use co-brokering, this is where, um, I see other people using it. Let's say, for example, you're a brokerage and you specialize in van loads, just hypothetically, right? And you do a lot of van loads. You're very good at van loads. Let's say it's my old niche, van loads out of the Northeast. And you start seeing a lot of opportunities either in other geographical areas or in your geographical area for flatbed loads, 
but you're not ready to take on those flatbed loads because you just don't have the experience. You don't have the carrier database. You don't have the pricing knowledge. You don't have that behind you. But this can be an opportunity for you to co-broker with another broker who has a lot of experience in the flatbed in that niche, right? Who can service that niche. So you're handling the van freight. They're handling the flatbed. You work with them, have them work with you on the flatbed freight. And then maybe they'll refer van freight to you and you guys can co-broker back and forth. So that's another strategic way to do it. But I'm not a big believer in freight brokers or freight agents going out and trying to build their business based on co-brokering, okay? And once again, regardless of whether you're co-brokering or going direct with shippers, you have to de-risk your business. Do not rely on one or two big shippers. You have to take what I call the mutual fund approach, right? So rather than investing in just one stock like Coca-Cola, right? You're gonna invest in a mutual fund. You're gonna take the mutual fund approach where they have hundreds of stocks. And what that does is when one stock goes down, other goes up and it levels it out. But if you just invest in Coca-Cola and that stock goes down or goes out of business, well, Coca-Cola is not going out of business, but you get my point. It can cause serious issues, cash flows, cash flow issues and, and lots of uh, disruption in your business. So I hope that helps, Blakely. Uh, Risha, Rishi asks, when are you going to get another student for an interview? You know, I've got a bunch that have asked me and that we've talked about it. Um, so probably I'll, I'll probably do an interview or two in the next 30 days. I haven't done one in a little bit. We had one scheduled maybe a month ago, or we had a couple scheduled a month ago. And then I had to, I had those tech issues. I had some tech issues here on this end and I had to unschedule them and kind of flip things around a little bit. So I need to get them back on the calendar. Thanks for the reminder. I'll try to do more. Uh, if you guys want to check out more interviews, um, you can go on my YouTube channel, go to the playlist and you'll see Freight Broker success interviews. we got a bunch of past students tell their story of how they started up and how they grew and the lessons they learned. And it's, they're really, really great. They're some of the most popular videos I have. So thank you for the reminder. Okay, so Joe Momadi asks, is it possible for a freight broker to have their customers under contract? Well, yeah, you can. Most shippers work with brokers in the spot market. That's where most brokers work. That's where they thrive is in the spot market. But you can have a contract relationship based upon specific lanes, or you can have a contract uh, um, that makes you the exclusive provider. Now, that's less common that's more what's called contract logistics, right? So there's a little, it's usually a little bit different, but yeah, you can be the exclusive provider. You can negotiate a contract if you feel, if, if you feel necessary, but be careful that what you ask for, right? Because remember when you put yourself into a contract, now you're obligated and there's usually some sort of damages or penalties or risk associated with that contract, because if not, why would you have the contract, right? So ultimately be careful, but you can contract specific lanes. You can contract for specific facilities. You can contract to do it all, right? Um, but be careful what you ask for. Okay, so Mike asks, do you think it's a good strategy as a former driver turned broker to go back over the road to court new shippers in person? Um, Mike, I wouldn't, if I were a past driver, I probably wouldn't go back on the road and drive just so I could meet shippers. Okay. But that's me. I understand why you're asking the question and it's a legitimate question, but that's a question only you can answer me personally. I wouldn't because the phone is my best friend. Okay. Phone and email and LinkedIn are my best friends when it comes to sales and prospecting. I can touch a lot more people and be a lot more effective, or I can do face-to-face -face locally, right, with shippers. The value that I think you have, Mike, is not the fact that you would jump back in the truck and go be able to meet shippers and show up on their dock. What you have, Mike, is you have experience that most freight brokers don't, and that is you were a driver. You sat in that seat. You dealt with the shippers direct. 
you understand better than anybody what it takes to pick up a load, deliver that load on time in good condition with no problems. And so what I want you to understand is rather than trying to jump back in the truck, what I might suggest is talk about your experience, talk about your stories and figure out a way, a mode that you're comfortable with. Maybe you want to do face to face. Well, if that's the case and your niche is geographically located in and around your, where you live, well, then maybe you just go out and do some door knocking. Maybe you show up on people's docks. Maybe you start having conversations that way and telling your stories and leveraging your personal experience as a way to get your foot in the door. That would be what I might recommend. But again, that decision is really up to you. So I hope that helps. Good question, Mike. Thank you. Okay, NBS Freight asks, I noticed lately that shippers are looking for cheap as possible in the market. Seems no one wants to build any type of relationship. It's how low, how low will you go? I'm passing on shippers more and more. Okay, all right, so listen, just know, in every market, whether it's a down market, a stable market, an up market, you're always going to have shippers that are exclusively focused on price. Now, shippers, what you have to understand is that over the last several years, the rates have been really, really high. And so shippers have kind of had the, they've had the control. They've had the bat, right? They've had control over that. They've influenced those because, you know, the, the rates of, or the, I should say the, the drivers, the carriers have controlled the rates. So they really kind of stuck it to the, the driver or the shippers because of supply and demand, right? So there was a lot more freight than there was trucks and that caused rates to go up. So drivers didn't really stick it to them. That's a misstatement. But the point is the dynamics of supply and demand, too much freight, not enough trucks drove the rates up. All right. And so shippers have been paying really high rates for several years. And when I say high rates, I mean really high rates, historically high rates that have ever been paid. Okay. Like crazy rates. So now the rates have come down, you know, and because there's more, there's, you know, there's, there's, there's more of a parity of trucks to loads, you know, they're, they're going to take advantage of that a little bit. And so what I want you to understand is you're always going to have shippers that are going to focus on price. My suggestion to you is if they're exclusively focused on price, don't waste your time. Up market, stable market, or down market, don't waste your time if their number one concern is price. Find somebody else because you will find somebody else. Because the fact is, is that, you know, markets go up and markets go down and smart shippers and logistics managers and transportation managers realize how difficult it is for them when their carriers and providers turn over. They don't want them to turn over. They want them to be profitable. They want them to be able to be sustainable because if they don't, they've got to go out and vet and find more carriers. It's only foolish shippers that are focused exclusively on rate, okay? The other thing I want you to understand that as a broker, whether rates go up or rates go down, believe it or not, it really doesn't matter. Now, you may find that hard to believe, but the reality is it doesn't matter because you as a freight broker are not paying the fuel. You're not paying for the truck. You're not paying the driver, right? So the reality is if the average rate, just hypothetically for easy math, went from $2 a mile to $1.50 a mile, and you were making 15% at $2 a mile, you'll still be able to make 15% at $1.50 a mile. Okay, so what you have to understand is you're making the middle, right? You don't control the rates, but you find the market and build in your margin, right? And now that involves sales, right? So again, a couple of things I want you to take from this. If your prospects are exclusively focused on price, do not waste your time. I agree with you, pass on them, follow up with them in three to six months, maybe Maybe when the market changes and, the, and, the, and there's more loads and trucks and things start to pick up, maybe they'll see the light. If not, then focus on finding shippers that are focused on providing value and relationships. And yeah, sometimes you got to kiss a lot of frogs. That's how it works. But the fact is the lifetime value of a small shipper, right? One shipper that does one load a week where you're making a couple hundred bucks a load, that's $10,000 per year in profit in the HIP National Bank. Okay, $10,000 a year from one small shipper. 
So it's worth it to kiss a lot of frogs because the lifetime value might be three or five or 10 years. That adds up to, you know, hundreds, you know, it could add up to hundreds of thousands of dollars in profit over the lifetime of that customer. So I hope that helps. Okay, so Sammy has a question. I've been thinking to buy your package, but what I don't understand is how am I going to be a freight broker if I don't belong to any company with an authorized MC and all that? Okay, so my freight broker bootcamp online training program covers two things. If you want to become your own freight broker, your own licensed freight broker, it teaches you and walks you through all those steps. If you want to become a freight agent, a freight broker agent working under a broker, it teaches you all those steps, including how to get hired, right? And how to become partners with them. So the freight broker and freight agent jobs are very similar. There's a lot of crossover. And so rather than having two different courses, I have one course that covers it all. So if you went and bought the freight agent course, or if there, if there would have been a freight agent course and a freight broker course, and you went and bought the freight agent course, you know, you would have had to buy the other course. I just combined them together. So you only have to buy one course, you get full support because most of my new students don't know whether they want to be a broker or an agent, kind of like you at this point. So if you want to be an agent, it'll teach you the step-by-step -step process and it'll teach you how to get hired as an agent and get started. If you want to be a broker, it'll teach you that process as too. Again, there's a lot of crossover. So I hope that helps, Sammy. And again, we offer a 60-day, 100% unconditional money-back guarantee. I can't make it any easier than that. Try it for 60 days. If you don't like it, send us an email and we'll refund your money. Okay. It's, it's that simple. Okay. So um, you can check that out at freightbrokerbootcamp.com. Okay. Good question. Thank you. Uh, Calvin asks, why do you feel it's better to call than going in person? This is my personal preference because I can touch a lot more people and I'm very comfortable on the phone. I'm not saying that face-to-face -face is not more effective because I believe face-to-face -face communications is always the most effective. But the fact is, is if you can say you can prospect 10 businesses a day, 15 businesses a day going face-to-face, -face, I can call a hundred or more if I really want to, right? Plus the other side of the equation is you're limited geographically to the people that you can touch physically on a day-to-day -day basis where you can walk into their locations and find their docks. A phone doesn't limit me to that. So I'm in Buffalo. I can call people in Boston and Philly and Atlanta and Miami and LA and Portland and Tulsa and Chicago, right? Whereas you can't go there. So those are just some of the reasons why I like the phone versus face-to-face. -face. But face-to-face -face communications is always the absolute best. You can read people, you can build rapport faster. It's harder for them to say no to you in face-to-face. -face. Yeah, face-to-face -face is very effective, but it's limiting. Hope that helps. Okay, so uh, Yasina Torres asks, what are some tips on how to reach out to customers on LinkedIn? I currently work as a dispatcher for a carrier. Maybe I'm putting a lot of effort maybe I'm not putting a lot of effort into my brokerage. Well, you'd be the only one that would know that, but I'll give you some tips on LinkedIn. And I can't get deep down in the rabbit hole because that would be a whole training. And if you want that, you can check out my YouTube channel. There's a bunch of trainings on there. Okay, some of them about LinkedIn. Uh, so some tips. Number one, you got to optimize your profile. And what I mean by optimize your profile is your goal is to make a fir good first impression. But the only people you care about they have a good first impression is your target market. So if you're in the flatbed industry and you're focusing on steel customers, you want to customize your profile to speak directly to them. That includes the header, the headline, you know, your, you know, what I do, your work experience, all that. Okay. So you need to customize your headline. I mean, you need to optimize your profile. Customizing your headlines are part of that. So you need to optimize your profile. That's number one. Because you don't want to do a reach out, outreach, and you don't want people landing on your profile because, again, before it's optimized, because you only get one chance to make a good first impression, okay? So you got to optimize that profile. Number two, what you want to do is you want to probably, if you're new to LinkedIn, you probably want to join some relevant groups, some logistics groups, 
some groups that are specific to your niche. Again, if you're in the steel industry or the flatbed or import export or whatever your niche is, produce industry, you're probably going to want to join some LinkedIn groups because that's going to expand your network. Okay. So if you're a group member and there's 10,000 people in that group, you are now not a first level connection, but you are connected to them in a way that can allow you to message them. You can show up in their search results. They can show up in your search results. So there's a lot of benefits to joining some groups. All right. In addition to being able to start some conversations there based upon specific questions or topics that people are talking about. Uh, the third thing would be, obviously you want to start doing some outreach to people that are potential prospects, right? So you want to start sending connection requests to people that are potential shippers. Now there's a way to do this. Um, you need to customize that connection request. You never want to send a generic connection request. Um, you probably would be smart to maybe like or comment on some of their content or some of their posts prior to sending that connection request. If, if you have that opportunity, that can the customized message there, you want to make sure it's very relevant to them. You know, don't make it about you. Hi, I'm a freight broker. Uh, I'd love to see if we can move your loads. Nobody wants to hear that. Again, this is where uh, my freight broker sales accelerator training comes in, where you're talking about creating a compelling sales hook, right? Matter of fact, if you guys want to get on the wait list for the freight broker sales accelerator, that's where I take this piece of my brain, everything about freight broker sales, how I was able to do over $200 million as a freight broker, my entire system, all my best strategies, tactics, tools, and my entire system. And I teach and coach you for five weeks in that program. Get on the wait list. It's probably going to open up in the next four to eight weeks. I'm not positive of the date. But if you're not on the wait list, you're guaranteed not to get it, get notified or get enrolled. It's absolutely free to get on the list. The training is not free, but it's worth exponentially more what the investment is. Okay. So freightburgerbootcamp.com forward slash, forward slash wait list. Okay. Um, so I hope that gets you started. You know, the other thing you could do is start publishing some content that's very relevant to your target market, right? If you're in the steel industry, you wanna talk about things that are relevant to the steel industry. If you're in the produce industry, you wanna talk about things that are relevant to people in the produce industry. If you're in the import exports, right? I see this mistake a lot. I see a lot of freight brokers on LinkedIn in particular posting content that's relevant to other freight brokers and freight agents, but it's not relevant to shippers. So they'll post something like, five tips that I learned about being a freight broker. I mean, I'm just making shit up. But my point is that's only relevant to freight brokers. Shippers don't give a rat's ass about that content. But if you posted something about, um, hey, here's some recent legislation that just came through um, that's going to impact the produce industry. And here's my take on it. And here's the article and here's the information and you put the ha correct hashtags in it, now you have an opportunity for someone in the produce industry, whether that be an executive, whether that be a GM, whether that be an owner, whether that be a transportation manager or logistics manager, for them to find and engage with that content and potentially start a conversation. Okay, so I'm getting off in the weeds a little bit, but that's a little bit of a pet peeve that I've had recently. So I hope that helps. All right, where was I? Hold on. Scrolling, scrolling. Okay, here's a question from Hector. Hello, I finally have a shipper that I've been quoting for him about one, about one and a half months, twice a week but never get the shipment. Should I continue quoting for him? Because I feel I've been used, I've been used as a price gauge. Okay. Well, here's the problem. I can already, my gut tells me you're probably doing all this via email. Okay. And all your communications are via email and he's keeping you at arm's length. That's what my gut says. I could be wrong, but I think that's probably what's happening. So he's sending you, he or she's sending you a request for a quote. You're replying via email and then you're just not getting the, the orders, right? You're not getting any shipments. So my suggestion to you is you got to get off email. You got to get on the phone or get in with them face to face and have a real conversation. And that conversation is, listen, I'm really excited about the opportunity to do business with you. And over the last several months, in the last couple months, I've done 12 different freight quotes. And unfortunately, 
We've, you know, I haven't gotten any of those shipments and I'm okay with that, but let me ask you a question. And then you got to dive into those quotes and you want to review those quotes and you want to try to help. You want to gather some sales intelligence so that you can understand why you're not being selected. Is it exclusively price related? How high are you? Are you 20 or 30% high? If that's the case, then you need to do more due diligence, right? If you're quoting substantially higher than other brokers, then you're missing the mark. OK, you and other brokers are typically going to be should be within 50 to 100, maybe 150 dollars difference on the freight. You should never be two or three or four or five hundred dollars difference. OK, if, if somebody else is brokering that load and, you know, then then you should be able to be very competitive. You're probably not tapping into the right carriers. You're probably not doing the right due diligence on the rates. So those are a couple of things, but I would get off email best you can, try to have a conversation face-to-face -face or over the phone, ask them if you could review and, and give some feedback, specific feedback on these different lanes. Maybe you could requote those lanes. Maybe there's something you missed about those lanes that caused your rate to be higher versus lower. Um, you can also help to understand and navigate future quotes. Having that conversation can sometimes make all the difference, okay? So that would be my suggestion to you. But I would continue to quote them, um, assuming that it's not taking you, you know, 10 or 20 hours to do the quotes. Hopefully, you're able to do the quotes fairly quickly within 5 to 15 minutes or so. I don't know how many quotes there are. Um, are you doing 20 lanes at a time? Are you doing two lanes at a time? I mean, a lot of that depends upon what their ask is, okay? So hope that helps. CNK International, I'm currently a carrier. Can I still run a freight brokerage business? Absolutely. But as a carrier, as a motor carrier, you will need to get your freight. You have your carrier authority, which does not authorize you legally to broker loads. But if you as a carrier, either within your carrier company or in a separate company, get a broker MC, you can broker loads. And it's absolutely smart as a carrier to set up your own brokerage, even if you only use it as a backup. Because here's why, as a carrier, let's say you got, hypothetically, you got five trucks. So at any given point, you can only service five loads at a time because if you don't have more equipment, you can't service it. As a broker carrier, you can not only as a carrier move those five loads, but if you have shippers that have other loads that they want you to move, you can then broker those loads out. So you literally could be brokering out 10 load, or you could be carrying five loads on your truck and you could be brokering out five loads and literally double your revenue without buying any more trucks. So yeah, I think it's absolutely foolish if you are a carrier and you don't have your freight brokerage. Good question. Thank you. Uh, Jorge asked, can I become my own broker if I'm not an American citizen? Well, your biggest challenge there, legally you can, but your biggest challenge there is securing a surety bond. So what you might have to do is you might have to get a partner in the United States to secure a surety bond, right? Because as a freight broker in the United States, you need a $75,000 surety bond. Now that surety bond doesn't require you to have $75,000 cash. It's more like an insurance product where you know, you'll pay anywhere between a thousand, two thousand, three thousand, maybe five thousand dollars a year for that bond, depending upon your credit. So the biggest problem with getting your freight broker authority as someone who's international and not in the United States is being able to prove your credit worthiness, right? Because credit works different in Europe than it does in the US. And so, yeah, so that's the challenge. What you might do is pick on bring on a partner in the United States, leverage their credit. And, you know, they get a piece of the business and whatever. So I've seen other people do that. So I hope that helps. Okay, Tammy asks, what's the difference between a freight agent versus a broker? Do you offer dispatch classes new to the game? I don't do dispatch. Um, no, I don't do dispatch. Not a big believer in the dispatch business model. It can work. Uh, don't want to go down that road. I'm focused more on teaching people how to become freight brokers or freight agents. So I'm going to tell you the difference. A freight broker is licensed by the FMCSA, the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, to broker loads inside the United States, okay? So they go through a licensing process. Now, there's not an exam 
There's no difficult requirements. You don't have to get certified. You got to file an application. You got to get a, you know, a broker bond, some basic check boxes. But if you have a high school diploma or equivalent, you can get your freight broker license, but you do not need to take a test, you know, like an insurance person or a real estate person or someone who does hair cosmetology. They all have to take tests, state tests. Brokers don't. Okay. So that's number one. They are licensed to broker freight anywhere in the United States. All right. A freight agent is someone that's an, typically an independent contractor that works under the broker on a commission only, on a revenue share basis, where they'll take 50 to 70% of the profit on any of the loads that they originate. So they would, so if it's XYZ broker, the agent would go out as an, as a, uh, basically as an agent of F XYZ broker, they would solicit freight, they would move freight, and they would get 50 to 70% of the profit from the loads that they originate. So they're their own business owner, but because they're not licensed, they have to work under a licensed broker. I hope that makes sense. So agents don't need to get a bond, they don't need to get insurance, they don't need to get licensed, they don't need any of that, okay? They need to get training and then they need to find a broker to work under and um, and partner with the broker and that that's how that works. Matter of fact, the story that I shared with you today, the gentleman was an agent, he was working under my brokerage. We recruited him, brought him in. He was getting you know anywhere between 50 and 70% of the profit on any of those loads that he moved. So we were making money, they were making money and um, that's how it worked. Good question, Tammy. What time is it? Oof. All right, we're going to wrap things up here pretty quick. Okay, so Tamaya asks, how much time does it take to obtain broker certification? There is no broker certification, but there is a licensing process. In order to get your freight broker authority, it's typically going to take, I see it ranges anywhere between, typically it's anywhere between four and eight weeks. I see a lot of them being approved in the four to five week range, but you, you follow some simple steps. You submit your application, and then at that point, um, you know it's in their hands, and it'll take probably four to five weeks to get your freight broker authority active. And once your freight broker authority is deemed active, you can start brokering loads. Thank you, Cat Moody, for the kind words. Thank you, appreciate you. Okay, so question from Michelle. Can my current trucking company be of some help to get my foot in the door or do I have to detach this, detach from my company due to legal purposes? Hope this makes sense. All right, so Michelle, I'm not a lawyer. I don't play one on TV and I can't give you legal advice, but here's what I can tell you. A lot of the carriers that have taken my course and have set up brokerage uh, afterwards have had their carrier company in one company and their broker company in another company. But if it was XYZ Trucking, they then named the, the broker company XYZ Trucking and Logistics, okay? Or something very similar, right? So that there's a lot of similarities there so that it'd be easy to kind of pass them off as sister companies. But they separated them for two primary reasons. Well, three. One is liability, which you talked about. Two is the fact that I have heard that as a carrier, if you bring a broker MC under your carrier company, it can impact your truck insurance, okay? And it can cause your truck insurance to go up. I don't have any proof of this, but I've heard it numerous times from other people. I wasn't a carrier, so I can't represent that personally. I was only a broker. So then the other side of it is, if you were to ever want to close or sell one of those businesses, it's a lot easier to do that when they're in separate LLCs. So those are some of the pros and cons. And again, this is not legal advice. I'm not a lawyer. I do have my pre-law degree. I mean, I did go to college for pre-law, but I did not go to law school. I did not pass the bar and I'm not a lawyer. And I'm so thankful that I decided to change course and not be a lawyer. <laughs> um, but anyway, that's another story. Okay, I got two questions about getting quotes. All right, so here's what you want to do. Go to my YouTube channel, search inside of my videos for freight rates or freight quotes. You'll see a training that I did, a step-by-step -step training that I did specific to doing freight quotes. It's a step-by-step -step process that teaches you how to do 
um, competitive and effective freight quotes. So rather than me trying to regurgitate that training here, go to my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel is, uh, bu -bu -bu, where is it? 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 Here it is. YouTube.com forward slash freight brokers. YouTube.com forward slash freight brokers. Or you could search freight broker bootcamp. You'll see the channel. Um, and then you can subscribe, hit the all notification bell, of course, so you get notified. I put out at least a couple of videos, new videos a week on that channel. Plus you'll get notified of these lives because I always stream them on YouTube. So that's where I would go to get uh, some training that you can consume at your own convenience about doing freight quotes, okay? So I hope that helps. Listen, if you guys are curious about becoming a freight broker or a freight agent, make sure you check out freightbrokerbootcamp.com, okay? Again, check out freightbrokerbootcamp.com. Um, we offer a 60-day, 100% unconditional money-back guarantee. Truly appreciate it. If you guys are looking for more advanced Freight broker sales help, how to acquire customers. And you're kind of working past that startup phase and you really need to get into prospecting and getting shippers and start getting positive cash flow. Get on my wait list for the Freight Broker Sales Accelerator. I promise you. I put over 500 people through that program in the last year. The feedback has been insane. Some of the success has been unreal. And I'm super excited. So that's where I take that five week coaching program. I teach this piece of my brain, I put it into your head. And I help you implement it in your business so that you can go out and start building a highly profitable freight brokerage. Appreciate you guys being here. Make sure you hit the like button. Before you leave, hit the like button. Are you guys crazy? Do me a favor. Hit the like button. Let other people know about this. Make sure you subscribe or follow me wherever you're checking this out. Have an awesome week. Have an awesome day. I'll see you next Monday with a new Freight Broker Bootcamp Live.